Google rolled out something pretty cool. I'm excited. Uh, came out today. Uh, I'm recording this on January 19th, and bam, there's January 19th. Just so y'all know how proactive I am. Um, test with even more ease and confidence with the new experiments page. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Make easier. So in order to make testing easier, they're rolling out an experiments page. Great. Um, you can do all the things that we've been able to do with experiments. So it's not like earth shattering, uh, but it is easier. So the process for, for experimentation is simpler. Um, they've streamlined it a little bit. You get to kind of do it all from within a single dashboard. I'll show you how it works in just a second. Um, so all that's pretty cool. The thing that I love though, is this sync, optimize your experiments, experiments with sync. Um, to make it easier to run valid experiments, we're rolling out a new way to sync your experiments with their corresponding campaigns. And what happens is, is if you allow Google to sync, then Google will automatically update your experiment with any changes you make to the original campaigns. That is, pardon my language, badass. Now you can actually, you can run an experiment in, in a live ecosystem because you're learning. And if you're optimizing anything, you know, in, in any A-B test, if you make a change, kill the A-B test. Well, now you're able to make a change, but continue the A-B test. Um, and in theory, see the disparity in the impact of that change uh, across two separate campaigns. Super freaking cool. Super cool. Um, notes about custom experiments that I'll include in uh, the description just so you know how to do it. One quick thing that I thought was really important is, um, where's monitor? Monitor, monitor, monitor. There we go. Uh, you have to understand the scorecard. You have to understand the scorecard of the experiments and how to interpret your scorecard. If you don't, or if you're looking at the wrong thing or you build it incorrectly and I'll show you how to build it in just a second, then it's not going to yield much in the way of, of anything tangible. The other thing that I'd recommend, and I've, I'm only saying this because I've made these mistakes, is when you're, when you're split testing anything, split testing gets very dangerous. Um, and we don't do it a lot for client campaigns, to be honest with you, because of, for this reason, A, you need a significant spend um, just to make sure you're not looking at, you know, some level of machine learning based confirmation bias. And then B, you want to look at things like cyclical market changes in um, the competitive landscape. Um, there's, there's more to split testing than the elements that you can control. All of that said, uh, let me show you how this works. So um, you're going to go uh, in all campaigns, you're going to go down to uh, experiments and then click on all experiments. Uh, and now we've got our little blue bubble here. So you can, there's three types of experiments, but two of them are kind of myopic in view, optimized text ads, video experiments, custom experiments. That's the one that we want. Um, do we want to run a, an experiment via display or search? I'll say search. Um, uh, testing for YouTube. Oops. Just in case somebody in my org freaks out. So now we have to choose a campaign and we can't choose a campaign with a shared budget, which makes sense because you're about to split the budget with the primary campaign and the experiment. You, It's going to be hard to do that in a campaign with a scared, uh, with uh, a shared budget. Um, so I'll just choose the first campaign that shows up. Um, and now we're going to uh, play the nomenclature game, which is fine. Um, save and continue. Now I have my campaign. So now I'm in the campaign build dashboard, which you recognize with the exception of this little burp, 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 um, one, two, three. So we're setting it up and you'll notice that it's telling me no changes were made. So if I wanted to make a change um, to this particular campaign, uh, let's say I want to play with my bid strategy or whatever. Um, we can go bam, and then I'm going to change bid strategy, and we're going to maximize conversions. Um, cool. So now I've made that change, and uh, I'm done. So now if I wanted to schedule this experiment, I can tell Lord Google, hey, this is really important, by the way. This is the goal, which, you know, conversions. Uh, this is the goal that I'm aiming towards. Uh, am I increasing conversions? Um, am I decreasing costs, let's say. So I'd like to see these two things. Uh, and I'm not telling you that that's the, the prerequisite, by the way. You you decide what goals it is that you're pointing at and, and the direction that you want to head and then decide your budget split. I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to say what I'm about to say. I, I have a hard time thinking that an experiment that's not 50-50 is going to be valid. Keep in mind, your experiment split and impression share may not always be the same. For example, your experiment could have a higher impression share than your original campaign despite having a lower uh, experiment split. Um, 
if your experiment split isn't 50-50, then it doesn't, you know, it stands to reason that you could say like, oh, okay, if I do 1090, then I can extrapolate from the data and whatever conversions I'm getting, I can just multiply those by, it's the, the inverse of the, the distributed budget. But no, but no, because Google has thresholds, critical mass thresholds, that if you don't reach and achieve those, then um, performance suffers. So, I, and I actually maybe want to be policed on this a little bit. If somebody has, if somebody has a reason why a non 50 50 budget split would be viable from a data perspective, I'd love to hear it. But as a data nerd, I'm going to tell you that I don't buy it um, yet. I'd love to be, I'd love to be schooled up. Experiment split. You've seen this before if you've run experiments. Um, Google says, do you want this search based or cookie based? Which basically means every single time they search, we're splitting it. Or if I've seen this person before, then I'm going to give them the, the secondary experiment. Um, I think it, this really depends on what it is that you're experimenting um, with, obviously. But, you know, like for me, I'm going to do cookie based because I have a higher value lead prospect, longer sales cycle, that types of thing. And I want to keep people in the bucket they land in. Um, start and end date for uh, experiment dates. I've been saying something for a really long time, by the way. I've been saying that if you add uh, end dates to things in Google, I think they deprioritize your ads. I don't believe that to be true anymore. I think it used to be. Um, really do. But I, I, I believe they've, they've pulled back on that and they've probably pulled back since I've been saying it. So for all those of you that I've lied to, I'm so sorry. Um, so you can decide when your end date is, um, what the duration is. You know, I want to run this for 30 days or whatever. Um, and then, this is the cool part, sync. Uh, changes made to your base campaign will automatically sync to the trial campaign. That is so cool. That is so cool. I love, love, love that. Um, and they've got a whole article on sync. You can find that there too. So, and then you'd run your experiment. I don't actually want to run this experiment, so I'm not going to do it, but I just wanted to show you all what the workflow looks like. I'm really excited about that. Um, not for everybody. But I do think that maybe what we would do internally is I'd love to test. I'd love to use that to test, um, honestly, new features that Google rolls out would be a really good, a really good opportunity. Um, I like the, the ease of use, uh, the improvements uh, that they've made to the whole, the whole workflow. And then also this new sync feature is super cool. So for whatever that's worth, appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know we actually know what we're doing. We shoot a video every single day. So if you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any input, don't hesitate to hit us up in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We get very little human interaction. Thanks for supporting our channel. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.